Good morning. Hey, a few weeks ago, I began working with a graphic designer to create some new textures for this Minecraft in the browser project of mine. And today I wanted to show how I go about testing those new textures and some of the data structures involved. Um, why am I commissioning new textures? Well, the uh, license on the current set doesn't permit redistribution. So this makes it harder for someone to get an instance of voxeling up and running for themselves, since they have to go to a third party site to download the textures and they have to extract them, run a script to update some texture coordinates, and it's, it's a bit involved. It'd be nice if I could um, include the textures in a Git repo or maybe repackage them in a way that works more seamlessly with this game. So let's start at the beginning in our config.json file, and I will show some data structures. Okay, here's our config.json data. And go all the way down to the end is where we have a texture mapping of sorts. This is where we map a ID to a PNG on disk. So 14 is the default grass. Here's this grass side view with grass on top, dirt on the bottom. I'll just show that real quick, just so you see. Um, this one, for instance, right? And above is where we actually map um, block types. So this is poorly named, but a block type of or block or voxel type of one in the game is our grass and dirt block. And as you can see, it makes use of three different textures. 14 is likely the, the grass on the top, solid grass. 302 is likely the uh, dirt inside, or you know, grass on top, dirt on the bottom, side view of the cube. And three is likely solid dirt for the bottom of the cube. Let's just verify that. 14, 302, and 3. So 14 is the grass top. Um, looks like 302, yeah, grass side. And 3 is dirt for the bottom of the cube. Makes sense. But in order to use these PNGs and be able to draw these blocks, uh, a few things need to happen. We have to combine these textures into a single texture atlas or sprite sheet. Um, and I'll show you an example of that in a bit. And then when the cube face is drawn, WebGL needs to know which pixel coordinates within the texture image to map onto the, each cube face. To help with this mapping, we create a texture offsets JSON data file that works alongside the combined texture atlas. That was a lot of jargon. Let's look at something. All right, here is our texture atlas. It is a long file with all of our textures that the game needs in a single image. There's some padding because of the way WebGL works. You have to, dimensions have to be, have a, have a certain ratio. Here's some of our solid color block, or color block textures. There's leaves, there's the trunk, the tree, and the cross section top view of a trunk. So again, these are all combined into a single texture atlas or sprite sheet. It just makes it easier to do the rendering calls. Plus WebGL has a limit on the number of um, texture handles it gives you. So when you load a texture into WebGL, you say, hey, I want you to bind this texture data to this texture zero handle or texture one handle. So a sprite sheet means we'd have to do a lot less switching when we do the render calls. Okay, so this is the texture atlas or the sprite sheet. Now I talked about how when you're drawing, say this, this cube of coal here, it needs to know where to fetch these pixels from that texture atlas. And that's where the texture offsets JSON data comes in. So let's show an example of that. It's going to be very ugly, 
but that's the gist of it. And these are in the coordinates on texture coordinates are a little bit odd. One represents the end in the x or y direction, so that's why a lot of these are just decimal numbers between 0 and 1. So texture 14 has bounds of those. I forget exactly what these three values are. It's kind of irrelevant implementation detail, but that's the data. So here's the script that combines all those individual PNGs into a single texture PNG um, atlas or spreadsheet. So basically, we read the config that the data is contained within, so we just try to reuse data as much as possible. Strip off some stuff that's known to cause JSON decoding errors, like this. since this is an MJS file used by the rest of the game code, it's got export default at the top for a, um, oh, I forget what it's called, ESM modules, yeah. Okay, and then we're going to strip off comments. There's a regex to do that because Python's JSON parser doesn't like comments within the JSON data, which I understand. All right, and then we, um, we're we upsizing or downsizing them to a width of 128. So the texture image for each block is only 128 cubed. We could get more high res and better quality by doing 256, but then we're dealing with more data, more pixels to draw. At least I think. I haven't actually tested whether there's a noticeable um, impact on load, but I'm actually probably going to do a second video or another video where I try to increase the block density of this game. So instead of, pardon the uh, bad character model, but instead of blocked being about up to shoulder height, I think I'm going to try to make them about waist height and see what that does for performance. It would definitely allow you to build um, chairs and things that actually look and feel like chairs. But that's beside the point. Sorry for that aside. So here's the script. Um, we basically go through the textures in the config file, open them, resize them to the desired 128 wide, and then we combine them into the texture atlas. We do three of them in a row because of the way map mapping works. Um, if I could quickly, I'll show you again here. So we have three on top of each other, right? Um, what WebGL does, if you ask it to, is it takes these, this textured file with the data, and it kind of makes uh, some downscaled versions of it, pre-computes it, and imagine um, imagine taking this and then resizing it down. Instead of 128 wide, it would be 64 wide, or maybe 28 or 32 pixels wide, and it uses that downsampled texture data to draw blocks that are further away in the game. It's kind of interesting that it helps you do that just to increase performance. Now the problem with that is it does some like calculations um, and the, the edges don't quite line up. If you end up having like two different textures next to each other, it, it kind of does some like nearest neighbor, neighbor something calculations when it does the, uh, the scale down. Um, so ultimately when I'm drawing a texture in the game, I'm only using this middle portion because mip mapping this middle portion for blocks further in the game would result in like some artifacts around the edges. So that's why, yeah, it's kind of a hack, but it seems to work nicely. It's really oddly noticeable if you don't do this, that blocks far away just look terrible. And I actually think it ended up affected blocks up close too, just because mip mapping likely applies to everything. Again, I am 
uh, hypothesizing. I'm not a 3D graphics expert. Okay. That's the script. We compute some offsets here, and then we throw those offsets into our texture offsets JS file. And yeah, the texture coordinates, this is the bottom of the block, and then the top of the block, and then I, I assume this is the width. So that's, yeah, just some shortcut data for to use in the game when I um, generate the OpenGL array of texture coordinate data <laughs> they to go alongside the, the vertices that are used to draw the blocks. Sorry if that was a bit confusing. All right, so this makes that atlas or sprite sheet. I already showed you the texture offsets stuff. And that's really it. So let's let's do just do a quick run through of what the workflow is for when I have to do this. So I'm going to use this texture now for the, the side block. And here's my helper script textures up high. Okay. So it resized some things. Oh yeah, I do have some 256 textures in here that came with the Test Beauty Craft texture pack. Um, another thing I need to do is go and rebuild my JavaScript because we embed uh, texture offsets data into the JavaScript code. So we want it to be up to date and match the latest version of the texture atlas. And if we actually refresh this one, we should see different grass texture. Yeah, this is the different grass texture that doesn't come with the test beauty craft texture pack. Okay, now let's see if we can get Chrome to cooperate and not be aggressive at caching. That's the old one. Shift reload, let's see if that helps. Otherwise I may have to go to incognito. Yep, okay, that worked. Okay, so there's the new texture that I wanted to use. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I like it. Cool, well, just so I don't sneeze on Mike, I think we're gonna call it a day there. Thanks for that quick walkthrough of what I have to do to test uh, new textures, or thanks for riding along with that walkthrough. Have a good day.